everybody. Thanks for joining us for this lightboarding session today. My name is Drew Schulke. I lead the product management team for our primary storage portfolio here at Dell Technologies. And I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Jody Hoagland. Hey, thanks, Drew. Jody Hoagland, uh, Global Evangelist for PowerStore. And, so, uh, yeah, so Jody, like, I'm really excited about this topic today. Um, I, I always talk about architecture really matters when it comes to storage. And I can't wait to hear about sort of kind of the role that our autonomous active active architecture and power store plays in making life easier for our storage teams. And let's contrast it with a couple of the other, we'll call them architectural alternatives that are out there in the market today, get a lot of attention. Yeah, there, there are some stark differences. And when we talk about power store and advantages that customers are getting, it just all starts you know, with the framework of an, an active active design, active active architecture. This is really about driving simplicity, Drew. Uh, and driving ease of use to the customers. Uh, a lot of customers you know, globally are saying, I got to do more with less. I, I don't have storage admins that just sit and do storage all day. They'd have to right. do a lot of different things. And the result of that, from our perspective, was to architect and design a framework for a storage operating environment that drives scalability, simplicity, and performance uh, with a very clean slate design. And if we look at this from provisioning volumes, for example, we're creating volumes. Uh, Gone are the days of saying, hey, I'm, I've got to create a volume, but I'm going to pin that to a particular node or pretend that, uh, pin that to a particular uh, controller. In the world of PowerStore, we're getting an, an active-active connection or an active-optimized, active-non-optimized connection, meaning that the host, I'm just going to see this from a multi-pathing perspective, it's going to have an active connection to both. So there is no LUN trespass. There is no HA fell over that has to say, let me hand over services from here to here we have an active connection uh, to that environment. So from a host perspective, it's, oh, let me just send that down this path and then everything keeps on running. We also have that active active design all the way down to the drives themselves, leveraging active active uh, drive connections as well. So it's a very clean design, a very enterprise architectural design. And that delivers some, some very unique benefits and characteristics uh, from a framework perspective. So global data reduction. If we look at it from the storage pool perspective, we're getting a global data reduction base inside of the storage pool or at the appliance or array level. We have this thing called DNA or dynamic node affinity. Uh, one of my favorite aspects drew the technology, which is 100% software driven. Now we know that when a host is, is connecting you know, through, some applications grow at different rates than other That's applications. Right. And over the course of time, you, know, you might have one node you know, starts to work a little, a little harder than the other just based on natural growth of the environment. That's right. Dynamic node affinity or DNA has a couple of different purposes. Now, one of those is to assign at the point of creation the active optimized, active non optimized path. So you don't think about it, you just create a volume, right? right. The volume gets created and PowerStore handles that path distribution on the back end. As things get going over time, you know, six months, a year, two years down the road, things start to look at it growing in different measures, Dynamic Node Affinity will look at that and say, hey, you know what, I can guarantee better performance. I can guarantee better, lower latency. I can guarantee more IOPS, more throughput, if I flip that path on the back end. The host will just see that as a multi-pathing cutover. It's no impact. But the reality is, is that PowerStore is always working autonomously on your behalf to guarantee that you're getting the absolute best performance. No intervention. No intervention Beautiful. whatsoever. And that's all <coughs> software driven. Right? So some of the big enhancements we made in our four code announcement at Dell Technologies World, Drew, I know you were there, uh, made a, had a lot of meetings uh, talking about the capabilities, but up to 20% better overall data reduction that's right. because of software enhancements up to you know, 20, 30% better performance based on software-driven architecture and software-driven enhancements. And that was just two of many things yeah. that we did. Scalability increases, limit increases, et cetera. But getting down to this single pool design, active-active design, we also have a technology called DRE, or Dynamic Resiliency Engine. Sure. And DRE brings some, some pretty creative scalability to the infrastructure. So we can scale in single drive increments, so we can just add one drive at a time. Pay as you grow. Yeah, inside of the, in, inside of the architecture, inside of, of the single pool design. We can start with as few as six drives, but 
we can grow one drive. We can even mix and match. That's right. So customers start with seven terabyte drives and they want to start adding 15s. That's right. No fully problem. support it. No problem whatsoever. So it's a, a very clean design, very economical design, very performant design across the stack. Now, you have the quasi yeah. active active. Let's turn up the contrast here a little bit. <laughs> you have the quasi active active. In this case, you do have active active design. You're creating volumes, but this is a manual decision making process where PowerStore makes that decision for you in a single pool. In this design, I do get active active, but I've got to make a decision. Is that volume going to be on node one, node two? Is it going to be on aggregate or pool one? Is it going to be on agger pool one here? Uh, you also, this is as simple as you can make it because you could actually have multiple pools or multiple aggregates on, on each side of there. And these are all manual decision-making processes. And if you're creating those volumes, you're getting an active connection, HA passive, active connection, HA passive, even down to the drive, active connection, HA passive, active connection, HA passive. Those are all manual decisions. How many drives am I gonna to allocate to this side? Yeah. How many drives am I gonna to allocate to this side? Yeah, well, and, let, and let's pull the example here, right, where that application over time starts to create maybe more performance tax on one of those controllers. Like, how do you handle that? And that Quasi-active yeah, that, architecture. You know, in this in this case where you have things that begin to grow from a performance or CPU utilization, if one side starts growing faster than the other, you've got to start making manual decisions. Okay, um, I've now got to take that volume and move it somewhere yep. else. That's a manual decision. Am I going to move it from here to here, from here to here to here to here? All of those are manual decisions. Yeah. Uh, it takes time, it introduces complexity uh, inside of the architecture and the environment. So although it is active-active, it's nowhere near as efficient because also keep in mind that in a lot of cases with global data reduction, that's isolated to the volume or the aggregate. The yeah. more of those you have, the more inefficient yeah, you I become. Yeah, I can't be as, as, as efficient with that. So let's, let's kind of finish it out here with contrasting it with the final option, which is active-passive. Yeah, in this case, active-passive design oftentimes advertised as active active but if you dig a little deeper into that it's active active on the front end but active passive on the back end so when you're creating that volume you get an active connection but ha passive even down to the drive active connection ha passive now it's clean it's easy however it's not as efficient uh, and it's not as efficient for for several reasons one I create very regimented scalability when it comes to capacity. That means that one model doesn't support the same capacity as another model. Yeah. Now, in the PowerStore portfolio, whether it's our entry level 500T yeah. or the top end 9200T, yeah. what all, kind of, all the drives are available on all of them. Uh, yeah, right? Same capacity. And, and I can grow them <laughs> single drive at a time. You know, as you're describing it over here, it's like, boy, I not only have to think about where I am today, but where am I going to be in five years? Because right. my choice of a model here, I'm, I'm kind of locked in, right? Yeah, it's, so you're adding not just drives, but you're adding these things like drive packs or packs yeah. of drives, which could be multiple drives. And I think everybody knows all the money in a flash array. It's a medium. It's in the capacity. Yeah. It's in the yeah. drives. So when you start making those decisions of, hey, I need this amount of capacity, but, oh, well, you have to be in that model system. That may drive up cost. So you're paying more yeah. to get an amount of capacity where you don't necessarily have the performance requirement up there. Yep. You just need the capacity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that comes with some very strict limitations when you start looking at things at scale yeah. and how things grow at yeah. scale. This is great, Jody. So like, we, we kind of set this up as like architecture matters, right? And, and I love really, you know, you know we think about you know, the, the role it plays in actually making life easier for our storage admin, taking the autonomy and, and taking those kind of day-to-day -day tasks out of their hands, but then also thinking about kind of the long-term implications of that architecture, kind of forcing you into a model on day one that might not make sense on, you know, in year five kind of a thing. So this has been great. Um, and I guess the point being, look at architecture does matter and the autonomous active active comes with multiple benefits on the power store side. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, it's, it's all about driving simplicity. It's all about driving efficiency and it's all about driving cost effectiveness in the architecture.